Hello everyone. This is the ninth part of the story, Percy Jackson, the God of Magic. Chapter 41 Boston was exactly like I remembered in my past life, well not exactly, because this time I'm not in a hospital. But it was pretty similar in the end. Hestia had sent me on another quest, to avoid the Olympians hunting my ass, I really appreciate what she does for me. Anyway, with my quest at hands I explored Boston left and right, and boy I noticed a little detail a bit too late. If only disembodied voices were more, descriptive with their messages. I groaned, Boston was fucking massive, what did the voice expect? Go to Boston, the fucker might as well have said go to China and I would have been in the same situation, that shit was not specific at all. It's like saying loom for a cow in Texas, though I suppose that would have been better than what I have. And then it clicked. Oh my god, I'm a big idiot, I've been looking at this mission all wrong. Instead of trying to find something odd in Boston with my two mortal eyes, I should have focused on searching magic in the area. I just didn't think of it because I had nothing in particular to search for, but if the being was strong enough to alert Hestia of his presence, then, his magic should be leagues above anything considered normal within Boston. All right, grabbing the map of Boston I had conveniently acquired in the local post office, and with a generic mnemonic incantation I started to search the map for any magical anomalies within the state. This would take a while to do so, Boston was big, and with no parameters for the search it was basically like googling a random letter, or something along those lines. Nonetheless the spell did its job eventually highlighting one where I had to go, an hotel, which was. I swear to chaos if Ares is behind this I will make my personal mission to kill him. Begrudgingly I teleported to the alley behind the hotel, ready to nut punch the god of war. Fuck the man manual Ares had crossed the line where his nuts were secure, ready to fight I walked towards the hotel. Walking through the alley and much to my pleasing surprise the energy coming from the hotel was. Not anything like the magical signature I was used to feel in Ares, this one was vastly stronger. And before anyone ask, but Adam if the being inside the hotel is stronger than Ares shouldn't you be afraid? And to answer that question, are you retarded or forgot to charge your brain last night? Right now even Hestia could one-shot me so operating under that logic, fearing the unknown entity more than Ares was stupid, because both of them could kill me with a blink, for now. But fear not, I wasn't going to enter unprotected, I had a bunch of magical buffs to help me out if things got tough. So taking a deep breath, I opened the door to the hotel lobby and, that was it. I was immediately knocked down with what I can assume was the force of a horse punching my face with its four hooves at the same time. Literally, the moment I touched the door and moved that bitch a little I was down for the count. Unknown point of view. This shouldn't be possible, I stated, looking at the kid I had knocked down with my customized weapon, the four hooves. A warhammer that was shaped to look like door hooves of a horse together. Isn't he Greek, he smells Greek sister, my sister said. I, he does, I nodded, but he isn't entirely Greek. The Allfather won't be too happy that a living, Greek demigod entered his hotel. Only the dead should be able to enter the Valhalla, he isn't dead. I think, my sister hummed, poking the unconscious or dead kid with a stick. I, well if I killed him we are solving 50% of our problems. I offered. That is a bad joke. My sister sighed, now let's take the kid to Helgi, he will know what to do. I, I nodded. Adam point of view. I opened my eyes to find I was alive, which meant I had someone to hunt. What kind of asshole attacks an 11 year old kid without even announcing his presence? Not an anime enemy that's for sure. You are finally awake a man with a massively long beard said, his beard was, it touched the floor that just be a pain in the ass to keep, observing the man I noticed right away he wasn't the one that knocked me out, his was weaker than me, considerably weaker, I could tell that, so I opted to observe him, 
his hair is looked like a buzzard that exploded inside of a volcano, odd considering his beard was well kept. As for his clothes, he was dressed in a forest green pinstripe suit, with black designer boots as for accessories he was wearing gold rings and chains, many of them. Hmm. R, are you a pimp? He literally looked like a pimp, he was like the Santa version of one. What? No. The man shouted in response, my name is Helgi. I'm a hero. Well you look like a pimp, you should go easy on the gold accessories, and maybe change that suit, I replied. How dare you? Helgi the pimp shouted. So where am I? And who knocked me out? I asked, and the man sighed. You are on Asgard, Hotel Valhalla to be precise, and the one that knocked you out was one of the twelve Valkyries serving the All-Father. Helgi sighed. I see, analyzing data, analysis complete, starting run the fuck away from here program, you'll never catch me alive. Why did I run, well, I'm not sure myself, but it felt at the time like the right call. Stop on the name of the All-Father. Helgi the pimp shouted, running after me. Never. Chapter 42 I ran through the hotel with no idea where I was going, with Hilji chasing me close behind until I managed to escape the Nordic hero in one of the hundreds of corridors the hotel had, where I immediately changed form to that of an animal, a raven to be precise. All right, Adam, focus. Some way, some fucking how, you managed to get into the famous Valhalla. Now think, was this the place the voice in my cabin wanted me to see, if so, was I related to the Norse god some way? Interesting magic you have there, someone remarked with a chuckle behind me. Startled I turned around to see who had said that, and a single thought crossed my mind, F-U-C-K, in front of me, stood a barrel-chested man with massive arms, gray hair, and a square-cut beard that accentuated his weathered face. His left eye was covered with a black patch, leaving only his right eye shining with curiosity. As for his clothes he was wearing a polo shirt and some khaki shorts. Gotta stay on character. Quack. Ravens don't quack, the man I knew to be Odin chuckled, but I must admit is hilarious to see you try and fail so badly. So, you are going to kill me? I hesitantly asked. Odin snorted, the A-L-L-F-U-C-K-A-N-G-F-A-T-H-E-R snorted. I think you have been spending too much time with the Greeks, he laughed, why would I do that? So far you haven't done anything worth killing you. I, might have, I conceded with a small chuckle. Now, why are you here? Odin asked gesturing around confused as to why I had chosen to hide in one of the cleaning supply rooms his hotel had. I will assume you ask why I am here, in this broom closet, well. I kinda panicked and ran from the Helgi the pimp, I chuckled, but then processed what I had just said. I called one of his employees a pimp to his face, do I really want to die? Ha! 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 He does look like one doesn't he? Odin laughed, his guffaws echoing in the large room, causing the brooms to shake and the cleaning supplies to fall. He is surprisingly chill for someone on the same level as Zeus, maybe even stronger, I, he does, I nodded. All right, all right, drop the transformation, you are on the clear. Odin said, taking a deep breath, recovering from the fit of laughter he had let out a few seconds ago, with my approval. No one will touch you, he added with a smile and decided it was best to follow his command I did as I was told. So. I have a question if I'm permitted to ask, I said, being as respectful as possible. Then again, if Odin killed me, Ares and Zeus would never get the pleasure to do so themselves. Hmm. A win-win situation. Odin looked at me and said, sure, he smiled. Do you know if anyone contacted me in my cabin, you know in Camp Half-Blood? I asked, if someone could answer this was him, he was supposed to be all-knowing. 
No, Odin answered with a smile, I have no idea who or what contacted you, which is both refreshing and alarming, he chuckled, but I wouldn't worry about it too much if I were you. I see, I sighed. Now, let's talk about your magic, it's very unique, Odin looked at me with his right eye, or only I for that matter and smiled like a child with a new toy, something that genuinely terrified me. Do you infuse mana into your constructs? Or into your incantations? I spend hours, talking with Odin about my magic, and even the most insignificant details were enough to have the god of magic smiling like a love-struck fool. He asked me questions about things I had no idea how to respond or if I even could to begin with, in the end I decided to tell him a little about my Gryamor and with a Kakashi-style one-eye smile he offered me asylum on his hotel, under the condition I would answer his questions about my magical powers every now and then to the best of my abilities. In summary, Odin was a weird, very friendly yet terrifying. Unlike Hestia where I knew no matter what I did she would never hurt me, I instinctively knew I had to thread carefully with Odin. He was like a tamed lion, one wrong move and he's not tamed anymore, at least that's what I felt like I was a kid, walking on a minefield. I recognized that look, a very, very muscular girl said, walking towards me with a smile, the girl in question was a tall, burly teen with pale blue eyes, and snow blonde hair braided down her shoulders, let me guess, the Allfather found you interesting? She asked with a knowing smirk and I nodded. The name is Gunilla, daughter of the God of Thunder, Thor and captain of the Valkyries serving the Allfather, Odin. Gunilla smiled, I apologize for what one of my sisters did to you, have no doubt she has been thoroughly punished for hurting an innocent man. A pleasure to meet you, I bowed dramatically, the name is Aragon. Adam Aragon, son of the Tetanus of Motherhood Lido, founder of the pranking sect of Camp Half-Blood, and owner of the anything you can buy as long as you have money store, I chuckled. Gunilla stared at me, uncomfortable all of the sudden, had I said something wrong? I see, well, welcome to Hotel Valhalla. I hope you enjoy your stay, she said, all sense of friendliness gone, as she walked away from me. What is it with muscle ladies hating me, I sighed, first Clarice and now her, oh well, I can always bald her if she tries to bully me, I shrugged. With that said and done, I decided to explore the hotel, and see if I could find something interesting to do, who knows? I might have some fun around here. Chapter 43 Odin Point of View The boy had arrived, earlier than I had expected, but here he was, in my kingdom. If only Zeus knew who he had under his thumb for so long, the boy would be dead by now. Who is he? Asked the captain of my Valkyries, Gunilla with a frown, I feel he is partly Greek but that's not all there is to him. I looked at Gunilla with a knowing smile, I expected nothing less from my granddaughter, yes, but you can't know that neither can he. Not yet, he's not ready. Your will is my way, Gunilla said, kneeling down. Don't worry, I smiled at her, noticing that she was tense, he has a good heart, and a pure soul his presence will not bring any harm to Asgard. I understand, Gunilla said, still kneeling. Now, go and see that our guest is not treated badly, I said, winking at her, I will take a walk, alone. Pure of heart, he was. But if he fell into the wrong hands if his father managed to corrupt him, it would be the end of Midgard, so it was written. The boy, he looks more innocent than I had expected, my beautiful wife, Frigg said, teleporting to my side, for a guy destined to destroy Midgard, I was expecting something more. I don't know, evil. Yeah, I wasn't expecting someone like him either, I replied with a laugh. He reminds me of Balder, Frigg said, sighing with sadness, tears threatening to form in her beautiful eyes. I grabbed her arms gently and pulled her into a hug her head gently touching my chest. Yeah, although Balder wasn't much of a joker, and let me tell you Adam is, I commented with a short chuckle. Of course they are different in personality, Frigg stated with a snort, 
but their souls, they are so alike. They both genuinely don't want to hurt others, but alas they have both been forced to do so. Ah. Uh. I see, I chuckled, you are right. I just don't understand, how can he be the one destined to destroy Midgard, Frigg sighed. How can someone that is inherently good, be the one that will bring upon the end of times for Midgard? Well, when a man learns to love he bears the risk of hatred, I sighed, and so he will learn to love, and I would make sure, things didn't end like in my vision of the future, unlike Ragnarok, this future was not written in stone. Adam point of view. Hotel Asgard was so far, way more, and I mean way more interesting, than Camp Half-Blood, for one the hotel alone was several times bigger than the camp, and it had a more, advanced facility for training. From sword training to guns. It was cool, I had to admit. Brat, Helgi greeted as I walked to the lobby, and right away I could tell he was angry. Pimp, I greeted. I am not a pimp. Helgi growled. And I'm not a brat, I shot back. I don't know why they let you be here, but I will enjoy the day our king kicks you out, Helgi sneered. Sure, pimp, I waved him off. That's it. I'm ending you. Helgi growled, jumping out of his desk. You would be wise to drop this little circus act, Helgi, Gunilla said coming out of nowhere, her voice carrying a cold undertone. The All-Father has declared he is welcomed here, and until he says otherwise, you will treat him with the utmost respect, or I will show you why I lead the Valkyries into battle. Damn. I chuckled, loving the poetic justice of the situation. Fine, Hilji muttered, lowering his head. A wise choice, Ganilla said, her eyes cold and unmoving, almost as if she was dead. Wait a second, is she dead though? If I recall correctly only dead people go to Valhalla. Thanks for the save, I smiled, I almost thought you didn't like me, I added with a teasing grin. I don't, Ganilla stated, and ouch. But I'm not here to like people, I'm here to obey the commands the All-Father gives, and he likes you, and that's all I need to know. Huh, Odin likes me, that's already a win, alright, well, if you'll excuse me. I will go down to the training facilities. I chuckled. As you wish, Ganilla said, walking away, what a weird lady. Hestia point of view. It has been six days since Adam left the camp, and well I couldn't help but miss him, he was such a nice change from my old life. I hope everything goes right. I muttered. He's a strong and rather unique kid, Hades assured me. He will survive, and if he doesn't, will you can always come and visit him? Hades chuckled, and Persephone hit him, what? Don't pay attention to him, Persephone sighed, he is just trying to be funny and nice. She glared at him, and Hades shuddered. I know, it's just I can't shake this feeling, something big will happen to him. I sighed, and I don't know if this change will be for good or for bad, and that's what worries me. We might be gods, but even us can't control everything, Hades sighed, all we can do is trust him, and see what happens, he smiled. Yes, I smiled, all we can do is hope for the best, those words were nice, and yet I did not believe them, not because Hades was lying, but because, the situation felt, ominous. Don't worry, Persephone smiled, now, let's continue decorating his apartment, I want to surprise him when he comes back, she giggled. I looked at the apartment we were currently painting like mortals would do, and smiled. Yeah, let's. I chuckled. I don't understand why can't we let our servants do this. Hades grumbled, or at least use our powers. Because it would not be as special, Persephone added, sticking her tongue out at him, to which I laughed. Chapter 44 Odin had given me, a very good advice, something I failed to see or think of until he told me, the reason why mages in his realm were so good fighters, mana enhancement. He said the reason I was losing so much was because my muscles were barely getting any mana. 
it was so simple and even then that simplistic idea flew over my head until now, because realistically I only used mana with my spells out of that, I had no idea how to use that valuable resource. So Odin had someone teach me how to do so, it wasn't hard, just different, considering I was used to gather mana with my incantations, but once I managed to do it, the results were incredible, I was faster, way faster than before, stronger, but even with all those gains I was clumsier. I had lost finesse, moving faster, shortened my reaction time, and my new mana-infused strength was hard to control. Meaning I would have to learn how to fight all over again, but considering the improvements were too good for me to even care, and the fact it barely consumed any mana I was happy, I would get stronger and stronger, but it had a limit. For what Odin told me, each body has a limit of how much they could enhance with mana, that limit depends on the age and power of the person or god in question. People like Percy and Annabeth, who don't use the mystic arts to fight, apparently have their bodies function in a different way. A mage and a non-mage are very different in one single aspect, one of them can control their mana entirely while the other basically functions in something akin to autopilot. What did this mean? Well, people like them, have their bodies decide how to distribute the mana within them, but mages, like me, have to do everything manually, for better or for worse we control our mana almost entirely. I feel like I could crush Clarice with a single punch, I chuckled, as I punched a rock, shattering it. If she's a rock, and doesn't move, Perhaps, Ganilla commented, God damn it, I need to put a bell on here. Sorry, excited I got a physical boost? I wasn't sure I could call it that. Meh. I'll go with that. Impressive, Ganilla said, sounding not impressed at all, but far from the strongest I have seen. If you want to bring glory to your name, you need to train. Force is meaningless without skill. She was right about that. Can't refute that. But while I can't refute that, it doesn't mean I will not tease her, and, let me guess, you will train me, I smirked, and much to my, unexpected surprise she smirked back. Yes, I will. Gunilla stated, a smug grin on her face, and something akin to amusement on her eyes, I can't let you shame the All-Father by leaving Valhalla with such a disgusting, fighting skill, excuse me bitch, I don't even have a full year training. Alas it was a good opportunity, the Valkyries were legendary. I see, we'll, let's get to it, I rolled my eyes at her, and without a warning she punched me, with enough strength to dislocate my jaw. I stared at her, eyes wide open, my jaw hurting a ton, lesson one, never lower your guard. You probably thought as long as I can cast my spells I can win anything, well, all it took was a single hit to disable your magic. Yep, this was war. Taking a deep painful breath, I put my jaw back into its place, and said, I hope you know this means war right? God even after fixing it, it hurt. One it will take you a long time to win, Ganilla stated, amused. Day and night I would fight Ganilla and her sisters, not because our training schedule said so but because she was training me for the unexpected, according to her a warrior must always be ready to fight, anytime anywhere. And I can understand that, I mean, it makes sense, but fuck fucking damn it. I would be sleeping and boom a Valkyrie would swat my room and beat the crap out of me, I would be taking a dump and boom Valkyries. Eating? You guess it, Valkyries. And the worst part was that even with my enhanced strength and speed it was hard a fuck to hit them. In one week, they had broken and heal almost every bone I could name, granted I can't name many, but having over 20 fractures in a week was a bit traumatizing, even if they could heal the fractures right away. But. I had to admit, Ganilla's method was working. I was lasting more and more each fight, my body was reacting better to the random encounters, and while they still beat me, I was getting a hand of my new strength. I heard my granddaughter has been beating you, Odin laughed, walking to, what was left of me for the day. Not only her, each and every single one of your Valkyries. 
I chuckled. If you don't want this, all you have to do is say it. Odin smirked. At this point? I snorted. Oh no. No no, I will keep trying until I can make your granddaughter say uncle. I was going to make every Valkyrie submit before I stopped this. <laughs> Good luck with that, Odin added with a grin, beware though, if my son hears you beat his daughter. He sighed, and my eyes widen, would Thor kill me for that, he will invite you a drink, and then he will fight you, not out of revenge, but desire for a challenge, as if I was near to challenge a god. Hmm. I weighed my options, and well, you all know me, I'm a vindictive asshole. I will get my revenge regardless of the consequences of it. So, for our chat today, what curses are troubling you from the book? Odin smiled and I started to show him some of the spells I was afraid to use. Chapter 45 One month of suffering later. It had been a month and eleven days since I arrived at the Valhalla Hotel, of which I had been fighting day and night against the Valkyries. Today, I had my weekly duel with Gunilla, to see my improvements. I still hadn't managed to beat any of them, but to be fair they attacked me in groups, so I had faith that one against one, I would have a better chance of defending myself. My fight against Gunilla started like any other, with her trying to crush me in less than a couple of minutes, something she had managed to do the first couple times, but thanks to the psychological terror she had inflicted on me. With attacks at all times, I was on high alert and thanks to that I was able to keep her away from victory, dodging her attacks, one after another. But dodging wasn't going to win me the fight. If I wanted to win, I had to attack. With that in mind, I curled my hand into a fist and aimed at her nose when the opportunity arose, which thanks to my mana-enhanced body and her predominantly being a close-up fighter came rather soon pushing my speed to the limit and with our bodies being a few inches apart there was nothing she could do to avoid my attack and so my fist hit the bridge of her nose. Her blood splattered all over the training ground, but she didn't even flinch at that. She simply looked at me, and with something that could only be described as a happy growl of approval, she grabbed my arm before I could pull it back locking me in place, and hit me straight in the face with a mean left jab. Almost immediately I tasted blood, my blood, as I fell to the ground thinking. Come on Adam, you've been fighting her for a month straight now, day and night, don't let her get the best of you. But before I could process how to recover myself from this, she grabbed my head, her fingers digging into my scalp, and like a rag doll lifted me above the ground, my feet dangling in the air a few inches from the floor. And with a smile that lasted about a second, she slammed her right hand into my ribs with great force, my vision blurry upon impact. I could feel the pain rippling across my stomach, making me feel dizzy, disoriented. But it wasn't over yet, I was not going to go down with a single punch, willing my body to obey I threw a fast hook at her with my right hand which she parried with a left hand releasing my head in the process. Taking this little window of chance I forced my body to move mid-air, throwing a sidekick with my left leg which took her by surprise if the look of her face was anything to go by. The kick hit her right in the ribs, and pushed her a few meters to the right. You going soft on me love? I chuckled, as I tried to sound as tough as possible, but deep down I was struggling to keep my shit together. That punch she had delivered had done more damage than I had expected. I knew if I closed my eyes even for a second I would fall to the ground. Gunilla looked at me her eyes ever so mysterious, as an unreadable emotion ignited inside of her, maybe I am, she laughed. Taking a deep breath, I rushed at her, I was determined not to lose this time even if my odds were pretty low, Gunilla smiled, a predatory smile that I had never seen on her before, she was enjoying this? I'm a fucking magnet for crazy. Talk why am I dob tie 8 rewap fo 8 red nut. My spell was simple, covering my body in a magical field of electricity making me a living taser, adding some firepower to my hand-to-hand -hand arsenal. Interesting, Gunilla commented, dodging my attacks with relative ease. 
it will be a shocking surprise when you hit me, or I hit you, I replied with a lame pun, as I continued my assault. Thor point of view. From above the training grounds I watched as my daughter, Gunilla was fighting my father's guest Adam, in an honorable match. I expected nothing less from my fucking daughter, I was proud of her. Do you think the kid can win? I asked my father, as more beer was poured for me, it was a ret, re. One of those questions people don't expect answers to. No, not today, in a fortnight he will win his first fight against her, Odin replied with a laugh, Gunilla won't be happy at all, but she will be happy. <laughs> And I was fucking surprised that little shit was going to defeat a trained Valkyrie after a month of training. <laughs> I can already tell we will be great friends. I bellowed in laughter, beer dripping to the floor. He is very friendly, Odin chuckled, he is going to lose in 10 seconds. How? I asked, smiling ear to ear, this was exciting, there was nothing better than watching a fight go down. He has highly underestimated Gunilla's pain threshold, while it's true she has no thunder powers like you. She inherited your strength and will, Odin laughed, and then I saw it, Adam electrocuting my daughter, and much to his dismay. This was barely slowing her down, she was feeling pain all right, I could tell by the look of her face, but years of training had honed her to act through it as any Valkyrie should. Fuck, Adam sighed, as Gunilla knocked him out with an uppercut that sent him flying. I fucking love this kid, I laughed, banging my hammer to the ground as I rolled on the floor laughing, I lay claim to him as my possible new drinking buddy. Our bar fights will be legendary. Father. Gunilla groaned. He. Adam didn't say anything funny. Frigg muttered. He is overjoyed at the fact he has found a demigod that lacks all decorum, like him, Odin snorted. This marks the end of part 9 of the story, Percy Jackson, the God of Magic. Thank you for listening. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.